page, okay. Uh, we have uh, the pleasure to have uh, with us uh, today, Professor Francesco Silos Labini, his research director at the Enrico Fermi Research Center in Rome, Italy. Uh, he is known for, for his research on statistical physics and cosmology and astrophysics. That's why he's giving a talk here. You have already the announcement. You see uh, the talk already on the screen. Uh, his research field uh, are involved with complex systems, with dynamics of self-gravitating systems, galactic dynamics and kinematics, while he has also uh, a, a very, uh, he's very active in science diffusion, who has also does a nice work. Uh, as you see, the title, uh, the title of the today's talk will uh, be about rotation curves and mass models uh, of disk galaxies, like our Milky Way and external, and that this will lead to a new mass model that uh, he will propose. Thank you very much, Francesco. And we start listening to your talk. OK, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you, even if uh, on, on air, let's say. So, OK, I will uh, um, present you our recent work uh, on the Milky Way and uh, on external galaxies. And uh, in practice, what we have done was to uh, study the uh, galaxy, the um, uh, new data release of the Gaia satellite. And then uh, we have developed uh, some, uh, say, uh, new methods to, um, to measure the uh, Milky Way uh, rotation curve. So this is the, an outline of the talk. So uh, actually there are six uh, points, but uh, they are not uh, equally, uh, say, uh, long. Some, the, the first part uh, about the rotation curve of the Milky Way is much larger than the others. But okay, I will uh, uh, show you how, what we did to measure the rotation curve of the Milky Way, and then uh, the motivation of developing a new mass model uh, for the Milky Way, and then how we have uh, uh, expanded these results to external galaxies. <clears throat> so. Uh, okay, let's start from, uh, from the Milky Way. So this is, uh, these are the basic uh, properties of uh, the disk of the Milky Way. So uh, the density in general uh, is uh, um, um, moderate as a double exponential, one in function of the radius and the other one in function of the uh, vertical distance. Uh, there are the sun is at eight kiloparsec from the center. The disk is about thirty kiloparsec. Uh, beyond these uh, properties, the, the, we know that there is a flare. Uh, the disk uh, doesn't have constant height. Uh, there is a warp. The, ge the geometry is a bit deformed from being uh, perfect reflect. And then uh, there are um, different components, which is a bulge, a tin, and a thick disk, and then a stellar halo. Uh, the thin disk uh, has a mass of 3, 10 to the 10 uh, solar masses. The thick is about the same, and the bulge is eight a bit uh, smaller. The, the length scale of these three components are uh, different. Okay, the bulge is very compact, it, it affects only the very central part, while uh, the thin and the thick disk extends to uh, larger distances. So the, this is the characteristic scale of the exponential decay is 4.5 kiloparsec for the thin and 2.3 for the thick. Okay, this is in general the results that uh, uh, has been found for the Milky Way uh, and uh, with the surprising results that uh, the uh, rotation curve uh, is uh, flat at distances where the uh, uh, See the 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 the, the light uh, is exponentially it goes exponentially down. So this means that uh, in order to understand 
why the rotation curve is flat, one has to introduce uh, dark matter because one would expect that uh, the, 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 the rotational velocity uh, decays uh, in a Keplerian way. So like one over root square of the distance. Okay, so how do we measure the rotation curve? Uh, in general, we assume that the system uh, is uh, stationary and uh, axisymmetric. So in this way, we can use uh, uh, the, uh, genes the genes equation and uh, which connects the gravitational potential to uh, the um, various components of the velocity and uh, its moments. So the, in particular, the transversal velocity, uh, V phi, the radial velocity, and uh, clearly the density. Uh, in, in the external part of the galaxy, so when we go beyond the disk, uh, there is no uh, axisymmetry anymore, but we assume that the system uh, is spherically symmetric and again uh, is stationary. And so we use uh, the Gene's equation for a spherical uh, symmetric system, which is uh, the one in the bottom. Okay. These are results uh, for um, the disk. The idea is that uh, we assume that the, the objects move in uh, perfectly circular orbits about, around the galactic center. So in this way, from the line of sight velocity, which is the quantity that uh, we can easily measure, we can derive the rotational velocity. Okay, so what we use as tracer are different uh, different objects like H1 region and or as fades, planet nebula, and so on and so on. And there is then the external part between which reaches 200, 300 kiloparsecs, so a factor 10 more than the, the radius of the disk. Uh, in which, uh, in, in this case, the, the tracer do not exhibit any systematic motion, which means that they are not rotating, but they are just uh, having a, a more or less uh, uh, isotropic velocity dispersion. And uh, we can measure uh, the, the rotation curve up to this distance, but these kind of tracers are very rare, okay? And clearly, which this means that uh, when we, uh, from the line of sight uh, uh, velocity to obtain a, a, a circular velocity, we are um, using uh, a lot of assumptions. And so the idea is that, uh, let's see, the, other, the main assumption is that uh, the, there is only uh, in the disk a rotational component. And so the idea is that how can we um, be sure that this is the case? Well, that, that's uh, the rotation curve, uh, um, say this is a compilation of the data uh, that were available uh, um, four years ago. And uh, more or less, you see that uh, the rotation curve is flat up to 100 kiloparsec. But uh, say the, there are several questions behind the derivation of the rotation curve. Uh, and basically the, the main one is whether matter is orbiting in a closed circular orbits whether the uh, assumption that uh, uh, the disk is in a steady state uh, is verified in the data. And so these are clearly the two uh, main uh, uh, hypotheses uh, that uh, are uh, behind the use of a Gene's equation to derive the rotation curve. Uh, but excuse me, let me ask to, to understand. Uh, if this curve, uh, I mean, if, the, if there was no dark matter, this curve would go down to zero? Yes, it would decay as one over root square of R. Okay, thank you, thank you. So at least uh, that, that's the hypothesis. That's the the standard hypothesis. Not that we if the the we would expect from the distribution of uh, um, luminous matter that uh, uh, the, the the rotation curve would decay, 
as uh, it is the case uh, in the solar system. No? So the, the rotation curve of the solar system decays like uh, one over root, root square of r, the orbital velocity of the planets, because the mass uh, is uh, in the center where, where the sun is. Okay. So, <clears throat> but beyond the uh, line of sight velocity, which can be measured through the Doppler effect, uh, since uh, if um, the, the, like 10 years, more or less, we have a lot of data concerning the, the proper motion, the parallax and the proper motion. Okay, so the, in, in this uh, plot, you see that the, 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 the line of sight velocity is uh, one component and the other component is the proper motion. So the true velocity is, uh, is, uh, can be computed and uh, is, is the combination of these two motion. Okay, well, the, you know, the parallax, uh, you know, I, mean, I, I, I guess you know what it's about. Uh, the, the, the whole point is that, uh, say, up to uh, 10 years ago, uh, we could measure a parallax of a few arc second, while now we can measure parallax of a milli arc second. So this means that we have a lot of stars that we can use to measure parallax. Okay, this is uh, the, the, the situation uh, of, let's say, 10 years ago, no, no, more 20 years ago, or no, even more 30 years ago. So uh, we had only a few thousand objects of which we knew the parallax, okay, because the, with ground based telescope, uh, the limit was uh, more or less 0 0.01 arc second. And while now with Gaia, with the satellite Gaia, we have 0 0.04 milli arc second. So clearly the situation is uh, radically different, okay? And then also we can measure the proper motion even. I mean, this was, uh, this is the, uh, the star, ben, Bernard star, which we knew the proper motion since uh, uh, say in the, in the 80s. Now we have uh, uh, millions of stars for which we know the proper motion. Okay, this is uh, the, the Gaia data release scenario. So the first one was in 2016, then the second 2018. The third, which is the one where, that we uh, are discussing in this talk, it was uh, uh, released in 2022, and then we expect other two data releases. The number of object is really incredibly large. Now we have 1.8 billion stars with parallax and proper motion with uh, the data release number three. But then uh, we, what we need also is the radial velocity. So now, uh, uh, say paradoxically, the limit in the number of objects is not the parallax, but is the radial velocity. So for which we need the spectroscopic measurement. And so now uh, the, the second data release had seven million object, which is this this one. And now we have 33 million uh, stars, which anyway is a big number. Okay, so what we know uh, from observations uh, uh, are the, 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 the three uh, coordinates which identify the uh, spatial distribution of the stars. So, the, the distance and the two angular coordinates, and also we know uh, the three uh, uh, velocity co coordinates. So the radial velocity and then the two angular velocities through the measurement of the uh, parallax. So the question is how we can, uh, so if we limit our analysis up to, let's say, uh, 12, 13 kiloparsec, so like five kiloparsec, five, six kiloparsec from the sun, we don't have problems uh, in, in, in terms of uh, errors, in the sense that uh, the error is small, it's about 20% uh, of, the, of the signal, and so we can uh, just use directly the catalog. Instead, the problem is uh, if we want to measure the, uh, the, 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 velocity, the, the velocity field up to 20 or 30 kiloparsec, we have to adopt a statistical uh, um, method. 
in, because uh, we, what we want to do is to reduce the, the, the errors on the measurements. So these errors uh, are going to decrease with the time of observations. The more the, the satellites makes observations, the smaller are the error bars. So in the ne next data releases, we, the error bars will be smaller, and so we can go to larger distances. Well, what we did in this paper with my collaborator, Martin Lopez Corredoira from the uh, Canaria Institute of Astrophysics uh, was to develop a statistical measure, uh, a statistical way of making, uh, um, say, a trick to uh, reduce the error bars. So uh, you see in this equation, the observed number of stars is just a convolution of the true number uh, of stars per unit parallax convoluted with, uh, uh, say, a kernel, which, uh, <clears throat> say, uh, takes into account uh, the measurement errors. Okay. The uh, uh, hypothesis of the method that we have uh, introduced uh, is that uh, the errors are Gaussians. If the error are Gaussians, we can make an inversion of this equation and so compute the true number of stars from the observed number of stars. Okay, so what we did was to consider uh, a, a part of the sky in the direction of the anti-center, uh, because in that direction so the, the measurement error bars are smaller. And then we did uh, we we did this this inversion with the iterative Bayesian method called Lassi loose inversion method. Uh, okay, we we with this kernel. So the idea, the, the hypothesis that the errors are Gaussians is a reasonable one. So, uh, but then this can be tested. Indeed, what we did uh, first was the analysis of the second data release, and then we did the analysis of the third data release, and we have checked that uh, the results were uh, uh, coherent and, uh, and compatible. Okay, so um, the idea is that uh, we divide the, the sky region in cells, so in three-dimensional cells. In each cell, there are thousands or even uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of stars, depending on the distance from us, and then we can we can measure the average values of the velocity field in each of these cells by making this inversion method. Okay, so in this way uh, we can reconstruct uh, the uh, kinematical maps. So the maps in which we have the three-dimensional distribution of the velocity field, both uh, the transversal the component, the radial component, and the vertical component. Okay. So uh, in practice, uh, uh, we were able uh, to extend, say, the, 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 the limit uh, of the official uh, maps of the Gaia collaboration was, uh, for the second data release, uh, 13 kiloparsec, because they were using uh, a signal-to-noise ratio of 20%, while we could reach 20 kiloparsec by extending the signal-to-noise ratio to uh, almost 100%. Okay. <clears throat> by making this, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, average, uh, um, uh, statistical averages. So this is, for example, the result for uh, the radial velocity. Uh, you can see uh, we are uh, in the zero here. So the sun uh, is at zero. These are, uh, no, sorry, the sun is eight kiloparsec. This is the galactic center. There is always the, the difference of who use uh, Galacto, Galactico, the Galacto Center coordinates and who use the, 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 the center of, uh, in, in the sun. Okay, um, the different colors are different values of radial velocity. And you can already see that uh, there are gradients of about 40 kilometers per second, 40 even more, because uh, from, from the blue to, to the red is about 50 kilometers per second, which is a, a good, a, a, a large, uh, in a way, that was one of the unexpected properties that uh, Gaia has uh, shown, that there are large 
uh, velocity uh, fluctuations in many different directions, okay? Even uh, the transversal velocity has uh, these uh, properties of uh, uh, showing uh, large differences uh, in the galactic disk. And you can already see here from, from the left panel that uh, uh, the, the radial velocity decreases uh, with distance. Okay, because the, the, the color goes from yellow, which is 240 kilometers per second, to blue here, which is about 180 kilometers per second. Okay, this is the radial velocity in the, in the Z direction, and which shows again that there are uh, some <clears throat> non negligible uh, stream motions, gradients. Okay. And again, this is the radial velocity, uh, no, the, the vertical velocity in the um, in the radial direction, uh, which shows, uh, say, differences of about 10, 20 kilometers per second. So, and also there is a north-south asymmetry. All these, uh, say, what all these properties of the velocity field of the Milky Way were already seen by other authors. That uh, these ones on the on the right. Uh, even by by Gaia collaborations and uh, other uh, other ones, but in with the Gaia two we could extend, let's say, the the results from 15, 14, 15 to twenty kiloparsec. Okay, then we uh, have analyzed the third data releases, and uh, um, in this data release uh, uh, goes to a fainter magnitude, which means uh, many more sources and the par parallax errors become smaller by a factor uh, 0 0.8, okay? And 0 0.5 for revolver motion, so which is uh, something. Um, so we could, uh, in this way, uh, confirm that the results that we got up to 20 kiloparsec were uh, uh, confirmed by the new data, which have smaller errors, and we could also reach uh, larger distances from the center, which means uh, 20, uh, 30 kiloparsec instead of 20, uh, 27, let's say. Okay, this is again the, uh, the, the yeah, this is the, the tangential velocity. And again, you can see that uh, there is a clear uh, a decrease going in the, in the radial direction. Uh, on the left, uh, there is the, the case of DR2, so the, the other uh, data release. So you can see that um, they are um, very well compatible. This is again uh, the radial uh, um, component. And again, uh, we can see that the, the, see the structure of the colors uh, is, uh, is similar. And this is the, the vertical component. Okay, so in practice, what, what is the result of all these uh, studies is that, in general, one assumes that the Milky Way is an axisymmetric system in equilibrium. So where our stars orbit like the planets around the sun, which means that the radial velocity is zero, or close to zero, the vertical velocity is zero, and the... Uh, transversal velocity is close to constant. Instead, what we find is that uh, there are gradients in, uh, in the radial velocity of 40 kiloparsec and also in the tangential velocity. Okay, so it's not constant. Uh, now we can use the Gene's equation to uh, reconstruct uh, the circular velocity. In where now we have the information also on the uh, moments of the radial and vertical uh, equation. So we, we really use the full information that uh, uh, on the velocity field of the Milky Way. Okay. So what we uh, found is that uh, the, there is a, there is a term here which is the mixed term between radial and vertical velocity which is negligible and uh, uh, so given the measurement of the tangential velocity we have a correction this is called the asymmetric drift which can be uh, computed from the data because we have everything in this equation so nu is just the um, 
the, the sp spatial density, which is also known and can be measured from the Gaia data. So there are no, uh, say, free parameters in this equation. And so from the knowledge of the velocity field, we can reconstruct the uh, circular velocity. And this is what we found. I mean, instead of finding something which is close to flat, in the case in which we have the full six-dimensional information, so the three uh, spatial coordinates and the three velocity coordinates, we find that the um, rotation curve, instead of being flat, decreases up to 30 kiloparsec, of course. And then, uh, of course, we were not the only ones who have used the Gaia data to, to measure the rotation curve. There are many other uh, authors who found uh, results which are compatible with ours. But say, with our method, we could reach, say, almost 30 kiloparsec, while uh, other authors had to stop uh, 20, 25 kiloparsec, so a little bit less. So, for example, this is a, a paper by Ehlers and collaborator, and they have measured, they, they have just uh, uh, selected a certain kind of stars. So we had a, a sample with 30 millions, they have a sample with 23,000, and then they have combined different observations from Gaia and Apogee and so on to, 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 to reconstruct the rotation curve. But um, the data um, are compatible with ours, okay. Then the, 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 the same collaboration have done uh, uh, an update of, the, uh, of their uh, study, and now they had the 129,000 luminous red giant, and they, find, they found the same kind of uh, result. There was another paper by uh, collaborations of Chinese uh, people who found, uh, which again uh, used uh, a subsample of stars, okay? This uh, red giant, and uh, they found also found a, a declining uh, rotation curve up to 24 kiloparsec. Okay, and uh, this paper instead say may uh, gives an overview of the of the different measurements. Okay, the, and the title uh, is uh, is a self-explaining detection of the Keplerian decline of the rotation curve, okay. We, our measurements are a bang et al, okay. This is a very, a very recent one. And they also did uh, a, a different kind of uh, statistical analysis, tailored the composition, and again, they find that the rotation curve declines. So given that this declines, uh, we thought, uh, okay, let's develop a mass model, which is more uh, suitable to, to understand uh, the, uh, the declining behavior, okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, discussed in this paper. So the idea is that uh, the, there are uh, various components in the galaxy. Uh, in particular, uh, we have a stellar component and a dark matter component, okay? Um, the whole issue is uh, which kind of dark matter component uh, we use, okay? The, 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 the stellar component is fixed, is made by the thin disk, the, the, the thick disk, and the bulge. These are known uh, quantities. And, uh, okay, we also know which is the, uh, and the gas. The gas is just a, a, a small fraction of the mass. And, uh, okay, the, 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 the problem is how to model the dark matter component, okay? The whole idea of the Navarro Frank White uh, halo model is that uh, there is a, 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 a spherically symmetric dark matter distribution. So the disk, which is luminous, is flat and rotates, while dark matter is spherically symmetric and clearly doesn't rotate. It has a, an isotropic velocity dispersion. In this way, uh, if the mass is uh, grows linearly as a function of scale, which means uh, if the density decays uh, as one over r square, then the velocity is more or less constant. This is the argument of the navarro frank white uh, uh, model. Okay, so here you see kind of uh, visualized um, illustration of this model in which we have the spherical halo and the, 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 the disk. 
So, uh, okay, we have uh, the, the, this fit has uh, two parameters. One parameter is the density, and the other parameter is, is a typical landscape. So, given this uh, uh, density profile, we can compute the velocity. Okay. And this is the, the result. Clearly, the result is not very good, especially at the large distance from the center, so beyond 20 kiloparsecs, because the model was, uh, say, developed to explain a flat rotation curve, okay? These are the, the, the numerical value of the masses, about 70 key, uh, 10 to the 10 um, solar masses. Okay, then of course, one can make uh, a, an adjustment to this model by introducing another free parameter, which is uh, this exponent here, instead of being Z1, uh, uh, which is the, the classical navarro frank uh, ny model, one can tune it, and of course, one gets a better behavior at large scales. Okay, but clearly, one has a, we, the price to pay is to introduce a new uh, parameter, which is in general not a good thing to do. Okay. So in our idea was different and was inspired by this Bosma effect. So the idea is that dark matter is not spherically distributed, but it is on the disk and is traced by the distribution of neutral hydrogen. So why we, we have implemented this model is because uh, it is known from the very so from the 80s that uh, the rotation curve this is the, the the surface density of the stars we, we you see that the stars are the blue dots they go um, they decay rather fast instead the hydrogen decays very uh, much slower so the idea is that if we take the hydrogen and we multiply the uh, density of the hydrogen by a constant factor, we can fit the, uh, the, the, the dark matter, um, say, the, the, the amount of matter we need to explain the rotation curve, okay? So in this case, for example, uh, this is an external galaxy to for the uh, NGC to four uh, or three. So we, if we just take the 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 hydrogen, which is this uh, uh, growing uh, violet curve, and we multiply by more or less a factor ten, we can get the uh, rotation curve that we observe. Okay. So. Um, how does it work in practice is that from the surface density of the gas, which we can observe in some cases, uh, even in, in the case of the Milky Way, we get the velocity, uh, expected velocity of the gas, circular velocity, if by assuming clearly that it is in, uh, in, um, in a stationary situation. From the observed rotation curve, we can get the surface density of the uh, full matter distribution. And then the idea is that these two quantities uh, are, uh, are just constant and there is a simple uh, say factor uh, of amplification, which means only that when we observe some uh, H1 through the 21 centimeter uh, emission, in reality, there is much more, a factor more or less 10, 7, depending on the galaxy, uh, associated with it, okay, which doesn't emit uh, 20, uh, the, the line. So now, why it doesn't emit, uh, one can speculate about it. For example, uh, it can be very, very cold, about 10 degrees Kelvin or uh, something like this. Or maybe there is a dark matter uh, component associated to it, which is a non-baryonic one. But okay, that this can be, uh, one can speculate in different direction. But so the idea is that uh, the rotation curve now is uh, the one of the star plus the one of the gas, and then there are two constant factors. This is our fit. Instead of introducing uh, say an, un an unseen distribution of matter with, uh, say, properties which are derived from uh, numerical simulations, we just uh, introduce two simple numbers and, uh, and uh, check whether 
uh, the fits are good or not in the data. Okay, this is the case, for example, for uh, our galaxy. Uh, this is the, the, the stellar density, which, is, which decays exponentially with uh, a characteristic length scale of 2.3, 2.4 kiloparsec, while this is the distribution of hydrogen and uh, uh, hydrogen plus H2, okay, which are more or less constant, and then they have uh, a very fast decay beyond, uh, say, 17 kiloparsec. By using this this model, we get a much better fit to the data, okay? Not surprisingly, because in this case, we have a decaying uh, rotation curve, so um, uh, we, we get a better fit. And also, the, 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 the <clears throat> so in this case, the fit has only two free parameters. The, the, the distribution of hydrogen is the one that we observe. And so the, the length scale of the hydrogen is the one which is observed. So just to make a comparison of the two fit, in this case, we get a mass of the Milky Way, which is a factor about uh, five smaller than uh, in the case uh, of the uh, Navarro Frank White. Okay, so the mass is smaller, but uh, the fit is, be is better. The two fits, the, the, this one is better than this one. And uh, uh, the surface, the um, density of dark matter on the disk. In the, in the case of the uh, of our fit uh, is much higher than in the case of Navarro Frank White. So this is an important number because in general this number is uh, related to the to what people would like to observe through the dark matter uh, experiments. Uh, for example, here in Italy in the Grand Sasso and so on. So the density around uh, at the sun. Uh, is, 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 is important. And in our case, uh, it's about, uh, uh, say, 60 times larger than, uh, than in the Navarro Frank White case. Okay. Okay, so these mm, results have attracted some, uh, some interest of the, uh, from, from Scientific America. They, they say, okay, the, mm, the Milky Way may be missing uh, trillions of stars. Missing in the sense <laughs> not with respect to the Navarro Frank and White model, okay, in the sense that in this case, uh, the because the rotation curve decreases, I mean, the, there is a good uh, motivation to think about rather distribution of dark matter, and uh, and so the result uh, is that uh, the the full the mass is much smaller, okay. So then the question is, okay, are 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 these uh, kind of uh, is uh, uh, a, a declining rotation curve observed also in other galaxies. Okay, is, is, is this something very uh, unusual or not? Okay, to do to 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 understand this, uh, we had to analyze um, many many uh, about thirty galaxies from a sample uh, which is called Tinks, uh, which has uh, uh, which is based on H one observation, very high. Uh, precision yeah, H1 observation of external galaxy. So this is a typical then uh, velocity field in which uh, this is the receding part and this is the approaching part, okay, blue and red uh, in the in the rest frame of the galaxy. Okay, from this map one has to one can re reconstruct the velocity field. Okay, I will not enter in in the details of this method which was developed in this paper. But basically, from the line of sight velocity field, we can reconstruct the transversal and the radial component of, of the maps. Okay. And uh, you see, there are some, uh, even in this case, as in the case of the Milky Way, there are some gradients in the, in the velocities, both in, in both components. And, and then we can measure the rotation curve. So let's see, these are some examples. So here, this is more or less growing or flat or growing. This is declining. Uh, the, this is the also declining and so on. So there, there is a, a full uh, spectrum of possibilities. Uh, the violet case, uh, the violet line is the gas 
is the rotation curve expected from the gas, while the red is the one expected from luminous matter. And you see again, just by eye, without making a, a sophisticated fit, that if you, multi if you take this curve, you multiply it by a certain factor, you get the observed rotation curve. Which is again, uh, this was the orig original observation by Bosma in his uh, uh, degree thesis in the 80s, in which basically uh, um, the, the, this was known since uh, a lot of years, but nobody really, at least to my knowledge, has uh, uh, developed uh, a more sophisticated analysis of, on, on this kind of data. Okay. So these are many other galaxies. I will not enter in, uh, in all these details. Okay. So in this case, this is a, is a weekly decline. This is the this is instead declining much faster. Okay. Okay. So it's possible to make um, clearly uh, the 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 fits of all these uh, uh, galaxies with the dark matter disk, and this is the orange line. And you see they they, they are rather good. They are at least as good uh, uh, as the Navarro Frank and White. Clearly, they they both have two free parameters. The Navarro Frank and White as free parameters has the, the this. Uh, assumed um, complex uh, dark matter distribution, while in our case, we just have two constants, okay? Okay, then we can, con the, the last point, but I will be very brief, maybe if you are interested, we can talk about this in, in your questions. We, can, we What we have uh, shown in this other paper is that if we uh, make this fit, with the, the dark matter disk, uh, then uh, we have a simple way of understanding the fischer relation, okay? So, okay, first of all, uh, okay, the idea is that if the gas has an exponential decay, and this is in general uh, the case in all these galaxies, okay, close to exponential, for example, in the Milky Way, it's not really, really exponential, but okay, if it is something close to exponential, then we can use uh, the uh, exponential thin disk model to uh, connect the velocity to uh, the density. Okay, well, the exponential thin disk uh, gives you this uh, black line, okay, which is uh, just an analytical formula. Uh, that you can find on the bin and remain, for example. Uh, in this case, uh, this is normalized to the characteristic uh, length of the exponential decay, and uh, the velocity is, is normalized to the characteristic velocity, which is just uh, this quantity here. Okay, so we can measure the mass with our method, and uh, we can measure the characteristic length scale of the exponential decay, and this is given by the data. And so we can reconstruct this curve for all the galaxies. And what we find is that, okay, the, there is a, uh, in general, uh, I mean, there are clearly some uh, large fluctuations, but if you see the average value, which are these blue dots, they are in good agreement uh, with uh, the exponential thin disk model. Uh, so if there is a disagreement uh, we, we, with the uh, exponential thin disk, we can connect uh, the, just uh, by inverting the formula, the, this ratio, which is the mass over the radius, to the maximum velocity, to the characteristic velocity of the galaxy, which is the velocity in this, uh, 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 the maximum here, okay? And uh, when we do this, uh, we, we, we find a very, very perfect linear re relation between this quantity lambda, which is just the mass over the radius and the, uh, and the, and the velocity. This is something like the Tully Fisher. It's not exactly the Tully Fisher, uh, but uh, it's, it, we, we have shown that uh, it's very close to it. Okay. So if the, 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 the distribution of mass uh, follows the dark matter disk model, so there is a kind of simple theoretical framework to understand uh, the origin of the Tully Fisher. Okay, just the conclusion uh, very briefly. 
Um, so one of the things that we are now exploring uh, is the off-plane kinematic of the Milky Way. So um, in particular, we are uh, uh, studying uh, the uh, vertical velocity dispersion, which is uh, the crucial quantity which enters uh, in to compute the vertical acceleration in the Gene's equation. And this is something that can uh, clarify whether the distribution of dark matter is uh, uh, basically on the disk is flat or if, or if it is spherical. Another uh, way to uh, distinguish between these two models, so spherical distribution of dark matter or flat distribution of dark matter, is, is through a strong gravitational lengthening of these galaxies. This is also a project that we are studying. We done, have done an application to Hubble Space Telescope. Unfortunately, there are no data available that have a precision that uh, allow us to, to, to understand uh, whether the distribution of dark matter is spherical or not. But uh, okay, we can, uh, we can propose observations for certain kind of objects and see whether this is the case. Then uh, from a more theoretical uh, point of view, uh, where we are studying uh, the stability of disks, which is clearly very important to understand because uh, uh, say in, in typical cosmological uh, simulations, uh, these galaxies are embedded in this spherical halo, while if there is no spherical halo, so the, the idea that uh, a disk can be stable or stationary and so on, uh, I mean, it's questionable, and so we have to study these kind of things. And also, clearly, the relation with, with a cosmological model, because uh, the navarro frank white model has a strong uh, cosmological uh, motivation, because uh, it comes from, in a way, naturally, from a CDM, you know, called dark matter scenario, or the lambda CDM, and so on. While in, in the case in which uh, the, the, there is no a spherical halo, uh, then uh, clearly there are, uh, uh, one has to understand uh, which kind of uh, the, the, um, uh, cosmological model uh, of density fluctuations can give uh, origin to this kind of object. And clearly there are uh, many other observational facts, like for example, the core Kusk problem, or uh, the abundance of satellites and so, so many observations at small scales of, uh, of that uh, are in conflict with the standard cosmological uh, dark matter scenario, which in a way can be understood in a different uh, uh, model of galaxy formation. I can stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Francesco, let me here arrange first of all the okay so that you can see people around. Very interesting talk, very nice uh, uh, results and a very interesting presentation. Uh, it is time for question. Let me just ask uh, something before other people can ask here or from the web. Uh, what about the areas where we know that they are not axisymmetric and thick, like, for instance, the bar region, the Milky Way, and in other galaxies? How there we know there is a certain thickness, and we know there is not so much gas. How can uh, the the scenario apply there, and uh, what can we conclude? Sorry, can you? Uh, yeah. uh, what about the? Uh, how is the rotation curve treated in regions where we have, let's say, a bar component in the central region of the galaxy, closer to the center? Uh, they do not have so much gas, and we know that it is a thick component. So, okay. what can See, we learn? From that? Yes, in in okay, for sure there are structures, and uh, uh, in the in the disk. For example, uh, as you say, in, in, in the center of the disk, uh, which have an impact on the rotation curve. But uh, they, and uh, in general, these are, uh, uh, again, with Gaia, it's not very easy to go to absorb towards the center. The center. center. Yeah. Yes. But uh, um, the, the, the case for uh, dark matter and rotation, flat rotation curve is. Uh, in the outer part of the disk, not in the inner part. In the outer part, uh, there are no such uh, big structures. In external galaxies, uh, 
uh, we have seen that, uh, for example, the uh, impact of, uh, for example, the bar or the, the spar alarms on the rotation curve. You can see that the rotation curve is not uh, perfectly smooth, uh, or, but there are some wiggles uh, and bumps uh, here and there, which can be associated, even if it's not clearly something very simple to do. Huh? I mean, you, you, because you, one needs always a dynamical model. Okay, okay. Let me see here what is... Uh, so other questions, please, if someone would just raise the hand or... Uh, to speak because I'm maybe I'm missing you. Yeah. Uh, uh, may all. I? If there yeah, is no, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, so I also want to thank you. It's a very interesting and well presented talk uh, with all this uh, uh, beautiful phenomena. Uh, I would like to ask you since you mentioned different types of galaxies uh, and you used these two constants, Y star and Y, G, capital Y, uh, do their values change for the different galaxy? Yes, yes, they, they change. So first order, just to make it simple, you just have to amplify the contribution of the gas. So the contribution of the gas can be, the, 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 this constant can fluctuate from uh, five to 50, let's say. While the, 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 the other constant uh, tells you how much dark matter is associated with stars. This mm -hmm. is especially important in the inner region more than the out in the other region, because in the inner region, uh, maybe we don't observe everything. So it's a constant to take into account uh, that, uh, say, the, 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 we, the luminous matter can be not, on, not the, the full amount of matter. And in the inner part, uh, this constant uh, varies uh, factor two or three. So it's between one and five, let's say, not more. Yeah. And, and, no, and nothing about the ratio, perhaps, that is, the ratio can vary also. But yes, why? yes, the ratio can vary also. Yes, yes. We, I mean, uh, we had only uh, 25 galaxies. So we thought that uh, it's, uh, it's too early to make a uh, Pull a statistical analysis of the distribution of these two coefficients. Let's say. Right. So, so there's nothing universal about this law. Is no just a, a a tool you use in order to probe this. Yes. So the, the idea, for example, that was an idea that was developed uh, uh, by Daniel Fenninger and Francois Combe that there are on the plane uh, cold molecular clouds of hydrogen uh, that are not observed because they are too cold. And so the amount of how much, how, how many they are, the, this clearly influences the, 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 these uh, two parameters. And so, I mean, we don't expect that it's an universal property of galaxies. I mean, this depends a lot on the way galaxies are formed, on the way in which these are heated during the dynamical evolution and so on. Yes, and neither the distribution of errors, and not being Gaussian. Gaussian was a nice, very natural choice, but uh, <clears throat> if that was changed to a different kind of uh, uh, distribution, there, there would be no observable yeah. differences. I mean, that uh, if one chose another kind of exp function, exponential, but you could not expect to see any. So, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, other questions maybe from the audience here or from our friends that follow us so I don't see anyone if I'm missing someone please just speak so I'm checking that was uh, scientific American right very good congratulations <laughs> very nice no, then okay by accident by the way I mean uh, but <laughs> There was a, this paper of this French group that has attracted a lot of interest because they have put the word Keplerian in the title. 
We didn't, for example. No? They use uh, the Keplerian decay. So the fact that the rotation curve of the, of, uh, the Milky Way could uh, decay in a Keplerian way has attracted a lot of attention because uh, clearly it's something not, not at all expected. Mm -hmm. okay. Very nice, thank you. Okay. So if uh, there are no more questions, we thank Francesco again. Thank, thank you, you very much. And hope to see you uh, if you are passing by Athens, as you said. Thank you very much again. Thank Bye. you, Panos. Thank you, Panos. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Okay.